This fitting on this fuel pump assembly is the wrong size, and I need to install this tube nut, which is the correct size for what I need. So I'm going to cut this end flare off, reflare it, and put the right tube nut on. Put the cutter on and try to cut as close to the end of this flare as you can. Deburr the inside so we're not restricting any fluid flow. Now I tried using the Pittsburgh Harbor Freight flaring toolkit and it looks like it would probably work just as well as every other one, but in my case it didn't. You have these little pins here that hold everything together and those pins are just too thin and they just sheared right off. And it doesn't seem that there's a lifetime warranty on this tool, so you won't be able to take it back in and get a new one, which is kind of surprising for Harbor Freight. We just went with one that's a bit better quality. This is a general, and you can already see those pins are quite a bit thicker, and those aren't going to break as easy. Pick the size that's the same size tubing you're using. In my case, this is 5 16 so I'm going to use the 5 16 hole. And I want this to stick out a little bit above the surface here. Not quite so it's flush, but just so it's sticking out a little bit so I have room for the flare. In order to tighten these wing clamps, you really have to use some pliers and tighten it because you just don't have leverage with your fingers. If you were going to double flare this joint, you need a special tool to be able to do that. And it looks like this and just hooks up with the normal flaring toolkit. You're normally going to be doing that when you're working with higher pressure lines like brake lines, which are really high pressure hydraulic lines. These are just fuel lines. They are high pressure lines, but they're not going to be quite that high pressure. On any kind of tool where the threads are going to be under pressure or putting on a lot of torque, it's super important to put grease on them to keep them lasting long. And work that in there because whenever you're putting a lot of pressure on these threads, it'll grind up against the metal. And if there's not lubrication, it'll just wear out in no time. Now it's as simple as just tightening up the flaring mechanism. As we tighten this up, we'll start to see the flare form. Once you feel it bottom out and can't go any farther, you can loosen it up and take it off. We'll loosen these nuts and pull it off. Now we've got a nice flare right on the tip. Flaring lines like this is so much easier in copper nickel line, and that's why whenever I'm replacing any kind of fuel lines, I always do it in copper nickel. It's easier to work with, and it really does last forever. This stuff is never gonna rust away, and it's easier to work with. Putting this flare in, it's pretty tricky in steel, especially if you're doing double flaring, but with nickel copper, it's just a breeze and it bends very easy. Here's the union. Just make sure everything still fits together. Beautiful. Although I could have used a compression fitting, which is rated high enough for the pressures that are here, I think it's just a bit more comforting to use a flare like the one I have here. I think it's just a bit more permanent and it won't back off. I just trust it more.